To find out, I took a sample to the famous Diamond District in New York City, where I met Ara Arasalanian, who buys and cuts some of the most impressive stones in the world. Sitting in a beautiful piece of jewelry. 50 carat, they would charge you four million. <gasps> Not 10,000, not 100,000. No, no, 000. no. This is real, uh, the Wait, real McCoy. This is the real thing. This is the real thing. So, you know why I'm here. Yeah. More so even though small stones way. aren't usually his thing, R uh, agreed to participate in our little carats. experiment. 0.29 and 0.3 carats. I showed R three okay. small okay. cut gemstones. One was grown in Apollo's lab. The two others came from diamond mines. So tiny. I'm not used to those. Here. So uh, as I told you, at least one of these is man-made. Let me put this thing on my telescope. <laughs> here we go. I see them sparkle from here. Yeah. This is all good diamonds should do. They pretty much look the same. So normally I'm a rough guy. I mean, I do the rough diamonds. If I have to guess, well, it's a wild guess. I would guess this one. That's the, the one I have carat. in my hand. That's the point this three one. carat. Yeah. Yes. The one that is man-made is this one. The, but I know what, what I'm saying. I'm seeing here. I couldn't distinguish which one is man-made and the, the natural. With yeah. the customary jeweler's loop, Ara couldn't detect any difference in the man-made diamond. It's amazing what they can do. It's, but like, it's like a toupee. But it's the feeling which comes. You can, which one you prefer, the toupee or your real hair? The real even hair. If the, <laughs> even if the toupee looks great, <laughs> I hope I can still sell my goods. <laughs> More advanced equipment can reveal subtle differences. And Apollo isn't trying to trick anyone. In fact, their man-made gemstones are marked with a microscopic brand, so people who buy them will know exactly what they're getting. But for scientists, what's most exciting about growing diamonds is not how you can make them just like natural stones, but how you can make them different. Because with chemical vapor deposition, or CVD, diamonds can be grown into shapes and sizes nature could never produce. And you can tinker with the recipe. In CVD diamond, we can actually control how we grow the diamond so we can engineer the material to have the property match the application that we need. For example, Add a little bit of the element boron to the carbon gas mixture, and you get a blue diamond. That's where the famous Hope Diamond gets its distinctive color. But boron does more. So when you put the boron in, it not only makes the diamond blue, it also changes its electrical properties. So diamond with no boron, perfectly pure diamond, basically you can't get any electricity to flow through it. When you put boron in, you can now get electricity to flow through the diamond. And this is an essential component if you want to make an electronic device. Today, most electronic devices, from computer chips to televisions, are built from silicon. But silicon has its limits. Silicon is so 20th century. It's time to move on. Silicon has some fundamental drawbacks. It fails when it gets hot. Somewhere around the boiling point of water, it starts to break down. It's not able to process information anymore. Well, it turns out that there are a number of features of diamond which blow silicon out of the water. So take an electric train. Today, these modern machines carry tons of silicon transistors to manage the high voltage electricity coming into the train. But what if you could make those transistors out of diamond instead? Diamond can come to the rescue. Diamond has the ability to switch much higher frequencies, much higher voltages. Then all of that electronics could be simplified, the weight could be removed. You could envision that your train, instead of having one to two tons of electronics per rail car, might have only 50 pounds of electronics per rail car. And a lighter train is more energy efficient. The field of diamond electronics is in its infancy, and a lot more work needs to be done before diamond starts replacing silicon. But the potential is there, and the diamond growers have big dreams. Diamond switches that can improve our aging electrical grid, diamond windows for spacecraft, and who knows what else. 
Mother Nature was the only manufacturer of diamond for a really long time. And that's what's so exciting about a material like diamond is because it's kind of been kept in a little treasure box for a long time. And now we've just begun to open that treasure box and all of the possibilities which come with it are beginning to emerge as well. And now for some final thoughts on carbon. You might think of carbon as a kind of unpleasant little element. After all, it's the active ingredient in soot. It's also the stuff left over after you burn your toast. But it's actually quite distinguished among elements. Carbon has the highest melting point. Pure carbon can become graphite, one of the softest materials around, used every time you write with a pencil. Meanwhile, Pure carbon, when exposed to heat, pressure, and a little bit of time, also makes diamond, one of the hardest materials around, used for the cutting tips of masonry saws and jackhammers. Perhaps you didn't know, but when light passes into a diamond, it slows down to only 40% of its speed in a vacuum. Oh, and did I mention you can use diamonds to make jewelry? But carbon's greatest distinction of all is that it's the building block for the molecules of life. Carbon is remarkably fertile. You can make more molecules with carbon in them than you can with all other kinds of molecules combined. So we shouldn't be surprised that life, the most complex expression of chemistry we know, is based on carbon. And because carbon is the third most abundant chemically active ingredient in the universe, right after hydrogen and oxygen, we're given every reason to presume that yet-to-be-discovered life elsewhere in the cosmos would be based on carbon as well. So, what would we do? Where would we be without carbon? Jewelry would be a lot less interesting, but that would be the least of our concerns, since life itself probably would not exist at all. And that is the Cosmic Perspective. And now, we'd like to hear your perspective on this episode of Nova Science Now. Log on to our website and tell us what you think. You can watch any of these stories again, download additional audio and video, explore interactives, hear from experts, and much more. Find us at pbs.org. That's our show. We'll see you next time.